Hey you guys, today I'm going to be taking a look at the Melody of Memory demo and pointing out a couple of small details that I really liked. I'm joined by Novion today to help me. Hey everyone. Kingdom Hearts has always had neat details to discover, and that's the sort of thing I love talking about on my own channel. So it's pretty cool that Bio and I were able to find some in this demo. He has a great eye for detail and does a ton of this kind of content over on his channel, which I'm sure you've already seen by this point, but I highly recommend it if you haven't. Anyways, let's get on to the first detail. One of the first things I noticed when I booted up the demo was this great back and forth scene that loops on the main menu. Seeing Sora, Donald, and Goofy just joking around and laughing was such a wholesome thing to add. This animation right here is actually from Kingdom Hearts 1 in the Deep Jungle World. This was an interaction with Sora and Tarzan. The rest of these animations actually seem to be from Dream Drop Distance, and are not really, from what I could tell, any exact point, but just general animations that Sora would use. So there's a uh, talking animation that he uses, a uh, surprise animation, and also this one where he holds his hands behind his head. All of this is just so great, and I'm just hoping for the rest of the teams to have their own unique animations for this main menu. Speaking of animations, I love the little chibi loading screens. From what I've seen, there are five different loading screens. You have a normal looking one where the trio is just walking, there's another one where they all look happy with smiles on their faces, then there are these two determined looking ones, and this last one that looks like they got out on the losing end of a battle. These seem to be randomized, though the last ones seem to happen more often after losing a match. Alongside these, each of the selections on the main menu also have some cute chibi art that bounces when you have the cursor over them. Another detail that kind of has to do with menus are the backgrounds during the song selection. When you are selecting a song, on the right side you will see the artwork of whichever game the song originated from. On the left side though, in the background, you can see a shot of the world that the song originated from. Also, each world seems to have a unique progress menu in the bottom corner. This is such a nice detail, and I love seeing all the different symbols and imagery that make up that world. This keeps in line with other games where your command menu would change with different imagery based on the world you were visiting. There's plenty of little callbacks in this game. During Welcome to Wonderland, I took my eyes off the track and noticed a couple of cool details. The bed in the bizarre room shoves itself into the wall just like how you can move it as Sora to open up a path in the original game. And in the tea party garden, the cake appears and then disappears on the unbirthday table. This happens in Cage 1 when you sit on the wrong chair in that minigame. There's also one other background detail I noticed that was less familiar, and that's in Sinister Shadows. Some of the Radiant Garden stores are floating by the track, I assume just to show them off to the player. Either that or Merlin's been up to something. During battle you may have noticed that hitting an enemy will show musical notes flying out of them. We've always seen something fly out of Heartless, and the fact that notes that all look the same fly out instead of a heart makes me think that these will either be melody or memory based enemies created from Kairi's memories as she dreams to find Sora. I wonder if this will be what all these enemies will be created from. It could be another form of enemies, being a memory-esque enemy, adding to the list of Heartless, Nobodies, Nightmares, Unversed, and whatever else enemies I forgot to mention. <laughs> Alongside these music notes, there are also staff circles that are colored depending on who hits them. Blue for Donald, green for Goofy, and red for Sora. There's also a music effect on the sides of the staff path that fly up after every successful hit. Whenever there is an enemy who takes multiple hits to take down, they will have a stun animation for the last couple hits. If your party gets hit, you will see dark colored music notes appear and fall to the ground as if the note was falling flat. The last thing I wanted to point out in the gameplay was this ability crystal. A circling staff around the crystal pushes out when you interact with it. This kind of reminds me of the sound ideas and reality shifts Melody Catcher from the Symphony of Sorcery world in Dream Drop Distance. Of course, both being centered around music means that they are going to share some common themes. Circling around the tracks at certain intervals are these rings made up of music notes. Some of them we can see are gold, and others are silver. I originally thought this might be a Disney World versus Original World distinction, but Twilight Town and Traverse Town have a gold ring. Bio pointed out that the silver ones seem to be in worlds that have a light purple aura around them on the world map, not including the boss ones which have a dark aura. So Wave of Darkness for example. You can see the world logo has this purple outline, and looking at trailers, we can see the same for Night of Fate. It has a silver ring on the track, and is shrouded in darkness on the map. Perhaps because they're more dangerous? We might have to wait for the full game to check this, but either way, it was just an interesting thing to draw attention to. One detail that differs between the global and Japanese versions of the games are rankings. In the global version, you have ranks all the way up to A++++, whereas Japan has rankings all the way up to SSS. I'm not sure why this difference was made, but I just wanted to point it out. There are a couple other rankings that you can get for completing the tracks with certain objectives. One is a cleared ranking, which simply means that you completed the song without losing all of your HP. 
Another is the all chain badge that you get for not missing a single enemy or box. On a side note, boxes and barrels actually don't damage you if you miss them. They will break your chain though. The all excellent badge is received for getting all excellent ratings on the track. This will in turn give you a fancy crown next to the rating. You can also get a less fancy crown for just getting the excellent bar filled out in all the segments. Each time you play a track, you can fill up different sections, and your best version of that section will be saved. So you can fill up the bar and get that initial crown with your multiple playthroughs, but it isn't until you do a perfect run that you'll get the all excellent rating and the fancy crown. One last thing to note about this ranking screen is that you can actually level up in the demo. Um, this affects your HP, strength, and defense. I think this will come into play when you're fighting bosses. Now, for my last details, I wanted to point out some user interface ones. I like how the little Sora running icon is a match for his KH1 running style, viewed from the side. Also, the world tracks end with the screen transition we've grown so accustomed to. I found it interesting to look at these, as the first Kingdom Hearts game didn't have them between rooms. So for Wonderland, we have the Cheshire Cat, which is from, I believe, Kingdom Hearts Key. They used this instead of the Ace from Days, I assume because it's already in high res. As for Traverse Town, it has the heart symbol. This was actually used for the world in Recoded. These are pretty small things, but it's nice to make note of them given how much nostalgia melody is going to be given us. Oh, and I am quite grateful to the team for using the original Heartless and Unversed colours instead of the Final Mix recolors. I know the original colours are considered the canon ones anyway, but man, it's just good to see red wyverns again. The last detail I want to talk about was all the triangles that make up a ton of the UI. While it may not be anything, and it may be a huge stretch, I've been talking with Damon Watercage a ton about Yazor, and we noticed an interesting detail. A lot of his attacks revolve around triangles. Now Watercage made the point that triangles are used in rendering to save on computation power, and you can create any shape from them. So I wonder if the UI in Melody Memory is some kind of nod to Ansem using a supercomputer to help Kyrie dive into her memories. Again, probably a huge reach for what could just be a unique UI concept, but I wanted to point it out. And that is all I have for you guys today. A huge thank you to Nobion for coming on and helping me with this video. If you enjoyed this, you will love his content, so be sure to check him out. Anyways, thank you to my patrons who support me. Their names will be on screen right now. If you want to see my breakdowns early or schedule the breakdowns I want to do for each month, head over to my Patreon. Click the cards on screen to see some other Melody and Memory content. Subscribe or share this and I will see you in the next video.